Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And we just went back to the Misty Village, and we're going to enter the cave, because this will be our entryway into the Divine Realm, which is what we've been building up to this whole time, in order to, you know, figure out how to separate it from Kuro. So here we go. So perfect, we have made it to the entrance of the Divine Realm. Now, I do quickly want to mention back when we faced Owl last time, if you recall when we talked with Emma, uh, she mentioned when Lord Takeru, who was one of the other Divine Heirs or Divine Men, came to Ashina, he brought that tree with him, and they needed the blossom, but someone had cut a branch off the blossom tree, and the tree had died and withered away. Well, when we go back in time to the Hirata State and kill the Owl, so Owl Take Two, we are actually given the aromatic blossom, which means that Owl was the one who cut off that branch all those years ago, and we know that he's been planning this for goodness knows how long. So that ever blossom is what we need in order to complete Emma's uh, ending, but we're not going to choose that one. We're going to do the other one, but just thought I'd give you a piece of information of where that all went. So here we essentially are facing off against the corrupted monk once again. This time she is relatively easier for the first phase, only because she is in a human form and no longer in a weird ghostly spiritual form, and therefore uh, she takes a lot more damage a lot easier. However, there are three phases. Now, this lady here is actually someone who is uh, fake immortal, which means that she has a centipede inside her, and overall she's a relatively annoying fight. Um, the phase one is another kind of pointless fight because it's just a rehash of the monk that you fought the first time, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, second phase we're not going to see because we're just going to bypass it. So in order to bypass the second phase, when she goes all crazy and smoky and disappears, all you got to do is jump up into this tree, and then she cannot see you, and then you jump down from above, and you can just instantly get rid of her second bar and start the third fight. Now, if you are interested in fighting the second uh, phase for some weird reason, it's pretty much identical to the first. However, as you saw there, she will, you know, shine uh, black, create a bunch of black smoke, and then she'll have a bunch of shadows chase after you. When I fight her, I just run away from the shadows until they disappear and just bounce along among the trees until they disappear, and then uh, go back and fight her regularly. And so phase three is when the centipede comes out. Again, the fight is essentially the same, however, you need to watch out because instead of a Makiri counter, it's very common for her to spit with her centipede. And of course the centipede, if it hits you, it builds up uh, terror, 
so it's very easy to have that build up on you and for you to die. So just make sure you dodge instead of trying to, you know, be fancy with a McCurry counter that won't do anything for you. But overall, again, not super hard. She's already nearly dead. She does hit like a truck. But so long as your uh, parries are okay and you're just, you know, checking your posture bar, it shouldn't be that bad. Come on, please. Please build up that. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Come on. She's almost dead. A little bit more. Oh, God, greedy. And then I got scared. There we go. Done. So we're going to grab the memory. We're going to build up our power. Oh, yeah. And of course, we're going to Mortal Blade to actually kill her forever. You'll feel what's interesting to note is that the game kind of tricks you that first time when you're facing off against, you know, the Guardian Ape. When you face the Guardian Ape the second time, it doesn't really tell you you have to kill it with the Mortal Blade. Uh, however, when you come here, when you do just your regular kill, it just straight up goes, yeah, guess what? You're Mortal Blading it, and it no longer gives you that. It just somehow assumes that you figured it out, and you don't need to, you know, wait around to do that extra uh, assassination, I guess? I'm not entirely sure. Yep, so we're just going to consume everything that we have, get as much power as possible, and then, as we head through these doors, we are going to see the Divine Realm. Dun dun, dun 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 dun! Any day now. Dun dun, dun 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 dun! Yeah, so, super pretty, I guess, right? Sure, why not? So anyway, the Fountain Palace is annoying. We're not, luckily we don't really have to deal with it too, too much. Uh, however, the first time you run in, it's going to be quite scary, because there are a lot of Misty Nobles. Now, if you recall the Misty Noble we killed to enter the village that looked like this, nothing happened. Like, we just killed them immediately and nothing happened, so you don't really know what they do. Turns out, they like to play their flutes, and they give you another uh, status effect, which is weakness. And it's hilarious the first time it happens to you, but it's also very, very scary. So what ends up happening is... You lose all strength, you use your sword as a walking stick, and you just kind of hobble around. Now, if any other enemy has found you, they'll start chasing after you, so you try to, like, hobble and jump away from them very, very slowly and hope that it wears off in time for you to, you know, save yourself. It doesn't always work, but we're just going to bypass most of the buildings because we don't want to deal with it. Now, for lucky, no dogs will follow us when we, and we'll be able to rest. Oh god, dogs, stay back! Ah, unfortunate, but we're just going to shirk in them. Again, it doesn't super matter. Dogs are dumb. And they're dead. And around this corner, there should be an NPC that we can talk to. Hello, yes, you're trying to move weakness me. You're gross and like a eel thing. すいたくて、すいたくて、仕方がないのです。特にこの先、中庭は鬼門です。宮の貴族がわらわらと先に進むなら、外周を回られた方がよろしいです。So she gives us just a warning about, you know, they like to consume youth and na, -na, -na. but it makes you think, how old is that old lady? For all we know, she could be in her 20s and they've just, you know, sucked her dry. I think that, uh, like there's an identical old lady later on just a bit further, and I think that might be her sister. And, uh, yeah, she's also really old. And they're not bitter at all, and by that I mean they're extremely bitter. So we're just gonna try our best to avoid them. This is pretty much the best path, we just wanna wait. Because there are a bunch of these uh, eel ladies, I guess. I mean, they're all kind of eel-like. supposed to be like you're looking like the dragon. They don't look like dragons to me. No, sir. They look like eels. Especially the women have like those really bad elongated necks. We're just going to sneak by because we don't really mind. There's nothing too important in this area. Uh, there is going to be a mini boss uh, that we're going to come across very soon. And that'll give us another prayer bead. But until then, there's nothing super dangerous. This is a bit dangerous. You can see that bar almost filled right there on me. That would have provided me weakness, and it would have been really bad for me. Also, they um, use lightning, because lightning in this game is very much tied to, you know, the divine realm and all that. Hello, spear lady. Oh my gosh, you, all you're doing is swiping. 
Holy moly, guacamole. Please die. Just go away. Stop. Stop. No, I don't want you to... Stop swinging. Oh my gosh. Spin to win times 27 in a row. There we go. Also, dogs are angry, because of course they are. So yeah, so super secret thing is just there's a little puddle here. We're, we already know that we know how to, uh... That we know how to... Dive, I guess. Yeah, swim. There's a bunch of treasure carp scales here. Again, we're not going to be dealing with treasure carp scales. In this area, there is a second merchant that will sell you treasure carp scales. Except the thing with him is, again, the way it works is once you've bought everything out for them, they will ask you to feed a essentially poisoned piece of bait to a giant carp we're going to come across. And then if you do that, the carp will die. And then you can go uh, back to where we fought the, the guardian ape the very first time and the body of the carp will be there. And you can get some stuff from that. But more importantly, uh, whichever uh, carp merchant, carp skill merchant that you gave the bait, uh, like whichever one of his baits you gave, will then become essentially like a fish. Weird, I know. But it's also one of the best ways to get, you know, like lapis lazuli, which is a very rare material. So we're just going to be really sneaky right now. We're going to go onto this roof and we're going to kill these few uh, evil women here who want to do us harm. And the reason for that is because down by our right, walking like that little stretch of land for reasons unknown, is a mini-boss, and it's essentially just like a divine bull. So it fights essentially I identically to uh, the bull that we faced in Ashina. Which means, you know, it's a pretty easy fight. Obviously he's going to hit like a truck, because of course he is also, oh my gosh, freaking, you're the worst. But we're just going to kill it, get the prayer bead, and continue on our way. Now... I've had it happen once in my in all my playthroughs, I've only ever managed to succeed once, and you can see the bull right there. But I've had it happen where I have jumped uh, down from above towards the bull, and I have actually gotten it to... Oh, I already failed. Good job, me. But I've managed to do it so that as I jump down, I get the red dot from death from above, and I've managed to death from above the bull. Now, doing that only takes away half of its health, but I mean, half of its health is quite significant, especially because it's such a tanky boss. So here we're just going to do exactly what we did with the other boss. We're just going to be a really rough fight of us running around, smacking it in the side over and over. And then, you know, just staying alive. We don't really care about taking hits super much. We have a lot of uh, healing gourds at this point in the game. And we can just, you know, tank and spank. Honestly, it's a pretty underwhelming mini boss fight. It's kind of annoying. I mean, the bulls as a whole, I mean, I've said it before, all the wild beasts as a whole are a bit of annoying fights because they run around the arena so much, and then you spend, like, half the time just chasing after them, trying to get a shot in here and there. I'm sure there's some, you know, super pro-professional way to actually uh, face off against them, but, well, I do what works. I say as I immediately get smashed in the face, but, you know. As far as I'm aware, this one, though, does not provide burning when you block the head straight on, which is very nice. I mean, I don't see any burning. Do you see burning? Your eyes are probably better than mine. But, uh, so it's, honestly, overall, this boss is less dangerous than the flaming bull that we faced off against the first time. Kind of peculiar, but, I mean, I'm not going to complain. So, boss is almost dead. I'm almost dead. I'm also, again, once a almost dead. Oh dear, come on, please just die. Please die. Like his health bar is neck almost. There's just nothing left. Come on, just a couple, couple strikes. Oh my gosh, this bull just won't go down. This can be longer than the boss fight. Jeez. Oh! He debated me. I legit thought it was that that he was doing. <laughs> Where you then can do the kill. I thought he was doing that, but then he just decides to do a couple more jumps. But yeah, so there we go. Mini boss dead. We get another prayer bead necklace and we can go across into the palace proper. But first, of course, we're going to run to where he was guarding, and it's just a couple pointless pieces of items. Not super important, but I mean, I like picking up items. When you see shiny things on the ground, you want to pick them up. Like, come on, you know you want to. And if you lie to me and say that you don't want to, then I know you're lying. So stop lying to me. But yeah, okay, so the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get super duper surprised. I'm, I'm kind of ruining the surprise for you, I'm sorry about that. 
Oh, well, I gotta talk about something. So we're just quickly gonna rest. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then we're gonna be like, I'm gonna go across this bridge. Surprise, it's a giant carp and it almost kills you. That's the carp that I was talking about. We're not gonna go to the feeding area uh, because I'm not bothering with it. But funny story is the old women that we've seen, their father uh, was taken to the divine realm along with them and they think that he was lied to and they essentially made him uh, responsible for feeding the carp. And the longer you live here and drink, you know, like the waters and all that, the more eel slash dragon like you become. So he's turning into a fish person very slowly. Also, this is where we get, I think I already picked it up, but I think it was in that chest from when I dove underneath, uh, the dragon spring sake, which if you bring it to that praying priest in, uh, is it Mibu village, the Misty village, he'll give you some, some pretty okay, uh, words are hard, I mean he gives you words, but dialogue, that's what it is, man I'm so smart today, yeah it gives you some okay dialogue where he's finally, because beforehand when he's talking and drinking his sake over and over and the sake that, that's been provided to the people has made them go crazy because it's not pure, he, he laments the fact that it's, oh it's not pure, it's not pure, blah blah blah, and then you can give him the dragon spring sake which is pure, uh, brewed straight from the divine realm of the waters, and he's like, this is amazing, finally. And you're like, good job, dude. Enjoy it. So yeah, so they want to surprise you here. They're like, haha, look, it's people. And I'm like, goodbye, people. I don't really care. So this whole arena is really annoying because, like, look at it. There's, like, five guys over there. Five guys with burgers and fries watching a performance. And I have no desire to fight them. And so we're just going to come over here and rest. Now, this whole time, if you've just kind of been, like, on the outskirts of the area, you will get these flaming, or flaming, these lightning soccer balls being kicked at your face that, you know, deal a bajillion damage to you. It's essentially how they teach you to not go into the water just yet, and it's this person right here who does them. And I failed miserably. Oh, oh, oh that was really dangerous. But, spoilers, this mini boss is actually a giant joke. And there we go. But he probably will be one of your least favorite people when you first come to this area, because if you try to go in the water or go near the water, his aggro range is ginormous and he will just kick uh, homing soccer balls at your face across the map. And here's the other old lady and she gives us a hint. So this old lady tells us how to get into the uh, back area of the place proper, and so that's where we're going to go, and you'll notice that the carp is also there. Now here's where I'm not fully sure on the lore, um, but in this area down here, if you go further back, uh, there is actually a skeleton of a great carp. And what you'll find feasting on the great carp are essentially what look like centipede things. Now the idea being that these great carps are bathing, they live in the divine waters. And so that, you know, is one of the reasons we assume of why they're so powerful and strong. Now the idea might be that uh, the centipede things have fed on the, and we know they're parasitic, if they fed on the great carps, and you know, if they fed on the bones of the great carp after one died or what have you, and then if they uh, spawn, I guess, and create a bunch of larvae, it's possible that that larva got picked up or the eggs got carried and went over the waterfall and entered the, our world that way, potentially. And that's how the centipedes came uh, to provide immortality to the simple marks or whatever. I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like that's something that's kind of implied. If you want to know more, well, eh.
So that's why the old lady wanted us to open the palace gate, so she could come in here and murder all of these people. And we're going to open this up, and this should give us another gourd seed, which is what we want. And when I did say eh, I actually meant go watch uh, Vati videos, uh, Souls series videos, lore videos on YouTube. They're really well done. And he's probably like the definitive voice on that type of stuff. I only said eh because I knew that that conversation was coming up and I didn't want to talk over it. Because that's the least I could do. So now we're going to run all the way up here and there are a bunch of, you know, scary women who want to do a lot of damage to us, but we don't need to talk to them. So we're just going to zoom over here, grab this oh, ah, sculptor idol, and then we're going to go up to the uh, final area, which is right over here. So we have finally reached the most divine of realms. Now, I thought Fountainhead Palace was part of the divine realm. Is that wrong? I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But anyways, we have finally reached where the dragon is, and we see a whole bunch of little mini dragons. And they want to poison us, and it's very sad. And so we're just going to kill them. The whole This whole fight uh, segment, as it were, is kill the white ones, and then some poisonish black ones will show up later, and then you deal with them. Now... This is where I get really annoyed with their death from above system. See, the way it's supposed to work is you get on top of the tree, you look at one of them, and the red dot for death from above appears, and then you pretty much, like, jump and slam him in the head and pretty much kill all of them in one go. But it just it doesn't work. Half the time, or more than half the time, it doesn't work. There we go. See? There we go. Look, and it killed, like, all of them, and it was great. Their death from above system for, you know, a combat that's so tight is really annoying, and I... Maybe there's some surefire way to hit every time. I don't know it. I just think it's annoying. But yeah, so these white ones that we're supposed to kill, those are where the health bar is. Uh, but it also starts spawning a bunch of black ones. Now, I don't know exactly why there are black ones, but what we do know is that the divine dragon came from afar, and he's wounded, hurt in some way, but he didn't originate here, and it's entirely possible that him being here is actually killing him slowly. And so here we are facing off directly against the Divine Dragon. This fight is a bit of a gimmick fight. Not entirely, but kind of. Essentially, all these trees are going to pop up, and we just have to bounce around between them, and then get struck by lightning and shoot a lightning blast at his face. Over and over. You can see that he's wounded. He's actually missing one of his arms. Uh, also, wow, that was... 
that was really unfortunate. I don't think I've seen that before. So I went to the tree, got struck by the lightning, which starts the animation. But as the animation was going off, the dragon knocked me down. So I fell onto the ground, didn't get electrocuted immediately, landed on the ground, rolled out of it, and then the lightning proc killing me. I've never seen that before, and that's really cool. But yeah, so all the dragon really does most of this time is every, every now and then you'll pick up some wind and uh, send you flying backwards, and so you just run back to the trees and just smack them over and over. It's not a super hard fight. What happened there was really hilarious and odd to have happen. Also, I got smashed again. But again, he's not super damaging. It's not super dangerous. I mean, it's a bit dangerous right now because I've already lost, you know, a resurrection orb. But for the most part, you just spend all your time uh, running between the trees. At least until they disappear. So yeah, what we want to do is we just want to hurt the dragon enough so that he essentially passes out. And then we're going to go steal a dragon tier. So here's where we get to the very uh, near end of the fight. And the dragon goes crazy. Our uh, trees are gone. And he's just going to start attacking you over and over and over. It's possible to deflect them. I figure just run in a circle, and, or not in a circle, serpentine, and then just, you know, jump. Also works quite well. Oh dear. Please leave me alone, sir. It's not a foolproof system, but well, it's better than nothing. And it was better than that parry that I attempted. Oh dear, I'm scared. Oh dear, please no, I don't want to die. Thank you. Good. And now we're just going to get on the tree, getting struck by lightning. And we'll bam. Anytime now. There it is. Perfect. And now we're just going to steal from him, and that'll be the end for me, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.